Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last session, we have discussed about control plane node, namespaces and the entire cluster at a very high level. In today's session, we will look at some more critical components of Kubernetes. So we will look at replica sets, then we will look at deployments and then finally we will look at your services. Now these concepts are very important because uh, these concepts they form the backbone of Kubernetes and it helps you to manage, scale and connect your applications. Once again before I start off with the session please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So grab your notebook and let's get started with this. So first we will talk about your replica sets. So a replica set is mainly used when you want to ensure that you always have a specified number of pod replicas running at any time. So like let's say you want to run five pods at any point of time, then you can make use of your replica set. So when we talk about making your application highly available, Kubernetes uses this mechanism to uh, maintain the high availability of your application. So whenever you are talking about making your applications highly available, uh, we need to increase the number of pods and to um, maintain that number of pods, we make use of your replica sets. Now let's talk about some of the key features of your replica set. So the first feature we have is it automatically replaces any of your failed or terminated pods. So if a pod goes down for any reason, replica sets will create a new pod and it will ensure that you always have the specified number of pods running at any given time. The next feature we have is it scales your pods up and down based on your configuration that you have defined. So uh, whatever the configuration you have written, replica sets will create the pods accordingly and then scale the pods as and when you update the configuration. Now let's uh, take a use case for this. So imagine you are running a web application and uh, you need to run three instances or you basically need three pods. So one pod over here, then another pod over here and then another pod. So basically for this web application, you need uh, three pods. And uh, you know, basically it could be your backend service, which is for your load balancing. And this is where we can make use of your uh, replica set. So basically, if you want to maintain a specified number of pods for your application, we can make use of your replica sets. And this will make sure these pods are always running even if one fails. So here I have the example code. So this is the example code for your replica set. So here we have specified the kind of object that you want to create. So here we are creating a replica set and here we have defined your replicas. So uh, this is where we are saying that we want to create uh, three pods. And here we have defined the container information, you know, where we have defined the container image. So, so Nginx is what we have defined. So here the replica set will ensure that there are three replicas of the Nginx container always up and running. So once again, uh, whenever you want to have a specified number of pods running, you can make use of your replica sets for that. Next, we are going to talk about deployments. So deployments helps you take the replica sets to the next level. And it does so by adding uh, management capabilities like rolling updates and rollbacks, which are uh, not available in replica sets alone. So deployments help you to declaratively manage your application's state. So the main difference between deployments and replica set is that your deployment also helps you to maintain the specified number of pods. But in addition to that, it also has your rolling updates and rollback capabilities which are not there in replica sets alone. So some of the key features of your deployments include it provides you with rolling updates for zero downtime uh, deployment. So if you're looking to uh, roll out updates to your applications without any downtime, then deployments is the perfect option for you. Then it provides rollbacks in case of issues with your current version. So this is another key feature of your deployments where if you encounter issues when you are deploying your updates, or a newer version of your application, you can easily do a rollback to the previous stable version of your application. 
Now these features are not available in your replica sets and that's the main difference between your replica sets and the deployments. Now let's take a use case for this. So imagine you have your app and uh, let's say you have released a new version of it. So let's call it as uh, 2.0 and uh, you want to update your uh, web application. So whatever the application you are running, you want to update this 2.0 and you are looking for uh, zero downtime so basically you don't want any downtime for your users and this is exactly where we can make use of your deployments so deployments provides you with zero downtime and with a deployment kubernetes will ro roll out the new pods gradually ensuring no downtime for your users so here is an example for your uh, deployment so here we have specified the kind of object that we want to create so we are creating a deployment and here we have defined the replicas where we are saying that we want to create three pods so this is same as what we did in the replica sets but in this case we are creating a deployment object and here we have defined the container uh, information where we have defined the name of the image we have also defined a strategy for your rolling update here. So this feature is not available in um, replica sets. Uh, this is where your deployments can be really useful. So the deployment will manage the rollout of version 1.21 of your Nginx image while ensuring at least two pods remain available during the update. So you can see here the max unavailable is set to one. So that means at any point only one pod can go down out of three so you'll always ha always have two pods running so that's basically your deployments where you can run a specified number of pods but in addition to that it also provides you with rolling updates and rollbacks features next we are going to talk about your services so currently we have an application here and this is running on pods. so let's say we are running uh, three pods just for the sake of example and these pods are owned by your replica sets so basically we have created a replica set and we have defined that we want to create three pods and these replica sets in turn are managed by your deployments all right now let's say this application has uh, three tiers so we have the front end then we have the back end and then we have the data tier and then each of this has uh, their uh, pods running so we have let's say the front end where we have three pod running just for the sake of example and then the back end we have three pod and then the data is also having three pod and now all of these pods need to communicate with each other and also the wider network and this can become very complicated for a number of reasons because as i mentioned in the last session uh, all of these pods will have their own ip right so the uh, pods will maintain their own ip addresses so, you know, likewise, the backend will have its own IP and the data will have its own uh, IP. And if you're using a deployment, it is going to create and destroy these pods uh, based on your requirement. So, you know, for any reason, if you're scaling up or scaling down, the pods will be deleted. And all the front end cares about is that it just needs to connect to the backend. So, irrespective of the pod, the front end just needs to connect to the backend and not to a specific pod right it does not need that so how do we know which ip address to connect to is through making use of your services so we basically don't connect to any specific pod rather we make use of your services to uh, connect to your backend pods so services will help you to group all of your pods together so your front end will not think of it as a um, uh, single pod rather it will think of it as a group of pod so be, instead of hitting the pod your front end will hit the 
service and then the service will in turn send the traffic to your pod so your services will help you to group this pod and also expose them over the network so that other components of your application can talk to them so you could expose all of your uh, backend as a service right so we can create a um, service for this and then the front end will basically hit the service which is basically talking to your backend pods so services in kubernetes provides us with networking capabilities for your pods they abstract away the complexities of dynamic pod ips by providing you with a stable endpoint for uh, communication with your pods now when we talk about your services we have four types under this so we have the cluster ip we have the node port we have load balancer and then we have external in we will talk more on this in the upcoming sessions now let's talk about a use case for this so let's say we had a front end application and this needs to communicate with your uh, back end service or your back end application so for this we'll basically have your uh, pods grouped together your uh, back end pods grouped together and we can leverage your cluster ip type or node port based on your use case so we'll be creating your cluster ip service for this and this can route to your front end will basically hit your cluster ip service which in turn will talk to your appropriate backend pods so here is the example code that i have for your service so here we have defined the kind of object that we want to create so here we are creating a service then we have specified the uh, port information so uh, we are specified the protocol the port number and the target port so this service will uh, we i have also defined the type of service that i want to create so i'm creating a cluster ip so this service will route the traffic on port 80 to pods uh, labeled my app on port 8080 that's all i have as part of your uh, service now let's connect the dots over here so basically we will have our pods let's say uh, three pods and these three pods will be managed by a replica set and this in turn will be managed by your deployments and then finally we have the service which will help you to expose these pods so um, your replica sets will create the number of pods uh, we can do the same thing with your deployments if you want to have the rolling updates and uh, uh, rollback feature and then service will help you to you know like create your uh, backend uh, 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 component so you can create a group of your pod and then specify the type of service that you want to create now this will ensure seamless communication within the cluster or also with your uh, external users now understanding the replica set deployments and services is very crucial because these are very crit critical components of kubernetes these components empower you to manage scale and expose your applications very efficiently so to summarize um, to list your number of pods that you want to run you can make use of your replica sets uh, we can make use of your deployments to manage replica sets and also provide declarative updates so with a deployment you can create new replica sets you can scale out to handle differing load you can roll out pause or roll back the deployment version you can also clean up your older replica sets uh, services allow you to group pods together and expose them over your network that's all i have for the session thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video if you found this session helpful please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel Hit that bell icon to stay updated on the latest content. Let me know in the comments about your questions or queries. See you in the next video.